In this video, we're going to answer the question, what is life made of? And I'm not talking about snips and snails and puppy dogs tails or sugar and spice and everything nice. I'm talking about the four classes of biological macromolecules. Because no matter the organism, whether it be this giant sequoia tree, okay, it's going to run all the way off the screen because this is really big. Okay. I'll put a trunk on that. Or this more familiar scale human. Or these little microbes, bacteria and protists. Okay, so you can't see them on the same scale. You can see humans and see a sequoia tree, but you get the idea. No matter what the organism and no matter what its scale on Earth, all life is assembled from these four classes of biological macromolecules. And by macromolecules, we mean large molecules that are typically assembled from lots of repeating units, okay? So, four classes of macromolecules. I'm going to put the four classes down the side here, and then I'm going to give you some examples and I'll give you some functions over here. And the first class of biological macromolecule are the carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates are also known as the sugars. So I'm going to label the carbohydrates as green because they are fixed by photosynthesizers from CO2 in the atmosphere. The second class of biological macromolecule are the lipids, also known as the fats. I'm going to label the lipids yellow because they are in fact yellow. Uh, picture of the cooking oil. Uh, vegetable oil is uh, all fat and it's in fact yellow. The third class of biological macromolecule are the nucleic acids. And I'm going to label the nucleic acids blue because scientists, when they label nucleic acids in cells, they'll often use dyes that fluoresce blue. And the fourth class of biological macromolecule are the proteins. And I'm going to label proteins it's all the colors of the rainbow because their structures are so diverse. That's because their subunits are so diverse. So we'll go through each of these classes of biological macromolecule and talk about examples and functions for each of those because seeing those all together in one place might help you might help you understand them better. So the carbohydrates can be single subunits such as glucose, one of the most famous monosaccharides or single subunits of a carbohydrate, or they can be long chains of subunits, long chains of monosaccharides to make a polysaccharide. And the single subunits have different functions than the polymers. Polymer, for example, one famous polymer of glucose is cellulose. Cellulose is the primary macromolecule in wood. And cellulose is a great example of how carbohydrates can be used for structure. But glucose can also be linked together, or so-called polymerized, into starch. Starch is an example of how carbohydrates are used to store energy. Lipids are long chains of carbon and hydrogen. They're also called hydrocarbons. And those lipids can be linked together and have another group attached of, of a very water-soluble or hydrophilic head group attached. That structure can be simplified to be drawn like that. And these lipids are now assembled into what's called a phospholipid. And a phospholipid is a great example of the biological usefulness of lipids because these lipids are very hydrophobic. That means they are water fearing they don't dissolve in water and water will push them together to assemble into these structures we call phospholipid bilayers and thereby and in that way phospholipids serve as biological membranes but lipids can also be linked together here we have three fat chains, fatty acids in fact, and let's link those three together. And this three fatty acid structure is called a triglyceride. And a triglyceride is the, 
prominent macromolecule in fat. Animal fat. So that's a great example of how lipids can be used to store energy. I think we have a theme going here. Nucleic acids, the third class of biological macromolecule I'll talk about, can come in a couple of different forms. Here we have two, a double helical structure, chain and back coming to the front, chain and back coming to the front, chain and back coming to the front. And we have two chains now paired with each other, and that's the most stable form for deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Nucleic acids can also be single chains. Here's one single chain with a poly A tail. This is a ribonucleic acid. And the nucleotide, the order of the subunits, the nucleotides in DNA and RNA, is the way biological organisms store information. A critical role for the nucleic acids written in the sequence of their nucleotides is the code that allows proteins to be made and proteins can then make all of the other macromolecules. Along with storing information, nucleotides, that is the monomer, the subunit of nucleic acids, can be linked to phosphates. Adenosine with three phosphates attached to it is known as ATP. And ATP is also an energy store. So here we have three classes of biological macromolecules that all have energy storage as one of their key roles. Now the fourth class of biological macromolecule, the proteins, I'm going to move this to give us a little more room, have many more structures because their subunits have many, many structures. The subunits of a protein are called amino acids. And amino acids have different chemical properties. And you can arrange the amino acids, and therefore the chemical properties, in any order to create proteins with very diverse functions because they have very diverse structures. For example, some of those proteins have long filamentous shapes. An example of a filament protein is keratin. And keratin is the primary protein in skin and hair and nails. It's an example of how proteins can be used for structure. But proteins can also be assembled that have regions, active zones, that catalyze chemical reactions. Here's a Pac-Man with some teeth. And, and proteins that form and proteins that perform chemical reactions like this are called enzymes. Enzymes have the critical job of catalyzing chemical reactions. Still other proteins might be built so they can span a plasma membrane. So here I'm drawing a phospholipid bilayer at low magnification. And now I'm going to put a protein across the surface of that, spanning that membrane. There we have it. So that when this protein binds a molecule on the outside, it can relay, it can change its shape and relay a message to the inside. This protein is a receptor. And it shows how some proteins can be used for signaling. So I'm just going to say, with this very short, very abridged list of what proteins can do, I'm just going to write many more functions for proteins because there are so many structures for proteins. So there you go. There's a quick snapshot of what are the four classes of biological macromolecules and how carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins can work together to assemble all different forms of life on Earth.